cost accounting 20 overtime premium and idle time. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep. Our LinkedIn group, MBA Accounting and Finance, and the reference for this is a very good textbook, Cost Accounting and Managerial Emphasis. You can see the authors and the edition and the chapter that I chose. A topic that up until now I haven't covered in my cost accounting videos is overtime and idle time and the impact that those costs have on our indirect costs. So let's define overtime first. Wage rates paid to workers in excess of their straight line or their normal pay rate. Somebody has to work extra hours or has a special arrangement by a contract and we have to pay them more money per hour. The question is why is it not a direct cost? Direct costs are defined as those that can be traced to a specific unit or batch, and I always use my Levi's blue jeans example. Well, the answer as to why it's not is that since scheduling work is random, overtime premium is attributable to the overall volume of work, the work that we do in total. So here's an example. Let's assume Levi's jeans pays overtime to workers when the total hours for the shift goes beyond eight hours. So they have eight hours shift. So let's say we're getting to the end of a shift and we still have work in the pipeline. We have an agreement to pay overtime for that work. Assume further that we make 10,000 pairs of jeans in the first eight hours paying straight time. But we have 500 more pairs of jeans that we make after eight hours or in the ninth hour, if you will. I think we need to make a note of that. So that ninth hour is going to be overtime. Why would we assign all the overtime costs to the 500 pairs of jeans that we make in the ninth hour? Because the fact that a particular pair of jeans was produced in that ninth hour is completely random. Who knows if the pair of jeans was produced in the first 20 or the last 20? So as a result, overtime premium is attributable to the overall volume of work. Now there's an exception. You'll find my video out there on special orders. So if we have a special order, or a rush job, the hours incurred and the cost for labor incurred to produce that specific number of units would be considered a direct cost because the reason we incurred it was to make a specific order, a special order, or a rush job. <clears throat> and one fact of life in a manufacturing environment is we have idle time, which is wages paid to workers for unproductive time. Why might we be unproductive? There's a lack of orders. Everybody showed up at the work site. We have to pay them for a whole day even though we didn't have enough work for that day. A machine breaks down. Poor scheduling. And the treatment of these costs is it's not a direct cost because we can't trace the cost of idle time to a specific unit or batch. What I wanted to do is to tie the concepts of overtime premium and idle time to an overhead variance example that I've done on another video. So we've talked about overhead variance, typical cost drivers to apply the variance, to apply the overhead cost might be machine hours, labor hours, the most common, or processing time. One example that I used in a prior video is repair costs for a machine. Well, what if we incur overtime? Well, we can get a couple of outcomes on our variance. We may pay an actual higher rate of pay on average because that rate of pay is, maybe it goes from $10 for straight time to $12 an hour for overtime. So our rate on average would be higher. It'd be something over $10, which was our original straight, line, straight time rate. And the actual hours we work are going to be higher. So if we have overtime, that actual hour rate might change, might be above the standard. We had a standard of 110, maybe our actual rate goes up to 120 because of overtime we have to pay. And our actual hours may be higher than standard. Idle time, on the other hand, idle time doesn't change the rate that we pay, but it certainly does change the actual hours we paid for, not actual hours work, it really should say actual hours paid for. 
So the actual hour number might be higher for idle time. Maybe we, maybe our standard was 3,500, and the reason that we have 4,000 actual hours is we have some idle time in there. Another reason our actual hours may be higher than our standard hours would be overtime hours. And finally, again, the reason our standard rate, our actual rate of pay per hour might be more than our standard rate might be tied into overtime hours. That's as far as we're going to get on cost accounting 20 on overtime and idle time. Not on the web or additional videos and spreadsheets, not on YouTube. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL. You can email me for a complete list of our videos on YouTube. You'll find the not on the web videos listed on our website, which is also below for live tutoring and chat sessions one-on-one. -on -one. stltest.net is the website where you'll also find our not on the web videos. Here's our email address and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.